हेलो गाइस वेलकम टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल इन्फोटेक विद जफर खान टुडेज एजेंडा ऑफ दिस वीडियो इज टू डिस्कस अबाउट द आर्किटेक्चर ऑफ कुबरनेटिस इन द लास्ट वीडियो इफ यू रिमेंबर दैट वी हैड डिस्कस्ड अबाउट व्हाट इज कुबरनेट कुबरनेटिस कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ कुबरनेटिस एंड वाट वाट आर इट्स बेनिफिट्स so this video also helps to understand the functionality of the various kubernetes components like et etcd api scheduler controller and how they are interact with each other it also gives the information about the kubernetes master and nodes and various concepts this is the high level kubernetes architecture diagram showing a cluster with one master node this is a master node and two worker nodes the node 1 and node 2 so these are the two worker nodes in kubernetes the master components makes a global decision about the cluster and they detect and respond to the cluster events let's discuss each of these components in details the here is first api server the api server is the front end of the kubernetes control plan it exposes the kubernetes api which is used by external users to perform operations on the cluster the api server processes rest operations rest rest operations validate them and update the corresponding object to etcd kubernetes api is the central management entity that receives all rest request for modification serving as a front end to the cluster modification means to pod to services replication sets controller and others also this is the only component means api component so this is this api component that communicates with etcd cluster making sure data is stored in etcd and is in agreement with the service details of the deployed ports now etcd is a consistent and highly available key value stored used as a kubernetes backing store of all cluster data so basically it is a database means etcd is used as a database it's it is a database that store the configuration information of kubernetes cluster representing the state of cluster at any given point of time if any part of the cluster changes etcd gets updated with new state you can say it is a simply distributed key value storage which is used to store the kubernetes cluster data it is only accessible from api api server for security reason etcd enables notification to the cluster about configuration changes with the help of watchers notification or api request on each etcd cluster node to trigger the update of information in the nodes storage the next one is the scheduler the scheduler is a component of a kubernetes master that is responsible for selecting the best node of the pod to run on it when a pod is created the scheduler decides which node to run on on it based on resources availability constraints affinity and anti affinity specification data locality inter workload interface and deadlines so basically schedulers helps 
schedule the ports are co-located group of container inside which our application possesses a co-located group of containers inside which our application processes are running on the various node based on the resource utilization it reads the service operational requirement and schedule it on the best fit node say for example if the application needs 1 GB of memory and 2 CPU scores then the ports of that application will be scheduled on a node with at least those resources. The scheduler runs each time there is a need to schedule ports. The scheduler must know the total resources available as well as resources allocated to existing workloads on each node. Controller manager. The controller manager is a daemon that embeds the core control loop shift with Kubernetes. In other words, you can say it regulates the state of cluster and performs routine tasks to maintain the desired state. For example, if a port goes down, the controller manager will notice this and start the new port to maintain the desired number of ports. So this is the controller manager. The controller manager runs a number of distinct controller processes in the background. For example, replication controller controls the number of replicas in a port. Endpoints controller populates endpoint object like services and ports and others to regulate the shared state of the cluster and perform the routine tasks. When a change in a service configuration occur, say for example, replacing the image from which a ports are running or changing the parameters in the configuration of YML file, the controller spots the changes. Remember it, the controller spots the changes and starts the working towards the new desired state. So this is the functionality of the controller manager. Now let's discuss something about workers node. Kubernetes worker nodes host the ports that are the component of application workload. The key components of a worker node includes the kubelet, the main Kubernetes agent on the nodes, the kube proxy, the network proxy, and the container runtime, which runs the container. So let's discuss them in details. First, let's know about the kubelet. Kubelet is a primary node agent that runs on each node. Its main job is to ensure that containers are running in a port. It watches the instruction from the Kubernetes control plan, the master component basically, and ensure that the containers described in those instructions are running and healthy. The kubelet task is a set of pod spurs. Is the kubelet tasks a set of pod spec which are YML or JSON files describing a pod and ensure that the containers described in those pod specs are running and healthy. So I can say that Kubelet is the main service on a node. Regularly taking a new or modified pods specification and ensuring that pods and their containers are healthy and running in the desired state. This component also reports to the master on the health of the host where it is running. The next one is the Q proxy. 
Q proxy is a network proxy that runs on each node in the cluster implementing the part of Kubernetes service concept. It maintains the network rules that allow network communication to your pods from network session inside or outside of your cluster. Q proxy ensure that the networking environment is predictable and accessible but isolated where necessary. Q proxy are basically a proxy service that runs on each worker node to deal with individual host subnetting and expose services to the external world. It performs request forwarding to the correct ports or container across the various isolated network in a cluster. Now container runtime. So under this part you can see number of containers are there. So container runtime is software responsible for running containers. Kubernetes, Kubernetes supports several container runtime including docker, container, CRI and any implementation of Kubernetes CRIs. Each runtime offers different features but all must be able to run containers according to the specification provided by the Kubernetes. Now how components interact when the pods is scheduled on a node. If we schedule the pod on a node, so how the, these components are interact with each other. Let's understand about this. When you create a pod, the Kubernetes control plan select a node for the pod to run on. So pods generally refer to one or more containers that should be controlled as a single application. A pod encapsulates application container, storage resources, a unique network ID and the other configuration on how to run the container. The kubelets, once the pod, once the pod is assigned to a node, the kubelet on that node is informed that a new pod has been assigned to it. The kubelet reads the pod spec, pulls the required container images and start the container. The container runtime on the nodes then run the container based on the specification provided by the kubelets. And kubelet proxy updates the nodes, nodes network basically rule to allow communication and from the container in the pod according to service definition. So these are the basically components they are interact with each other when the pod is schedule on a node. Let's discuss some design principle of Kubernetes. We have already discussed about features and benefits of Kubernetes in the previous video. So let's have more clarity over here. The Kubernetes was designed to support the features required by highly available distributed systems such as auto scaling, high availability, security, and portability. Scalability means Kubernetes provide horizontal scaling of ports on the basis of CPU utilization. The threshold of CPU utilization is configurable and Kubernetes will automatically start new ports if the threshold is reached. So whatever the threshold you have assigned, when the threshold is reached, the Kubernetes automatic, automatically start the new ports. For example, if the threshold is 70% for CPU, but the application is actually growing up to 
220 percent then eventually three more ports will be deployed so that the average cpu utilization back under 70 percent so when there are multiple ports for a particular application kubernetes provide the load balancing capacity across them so kubernetes also supports horizontal scaling of stateful ports including no sql and rdbms database through a stateful set now what is stateful a stateful is a set of similar concept of deployment but ensure storage is persistent and stable even when a pod is remote now high availability so kubernetes addresses high availability both at application and infrastructure level means your application will be also available and infrastructure level is also available so replica set ensure that minimum number of replicas of stateless pod for a given application are running now what is stateless when an application is stateless its pod is fully interchangeable scaling operation won't be won't result in the loss of any data that is stateless your data will be not lost this is not the true stateful application however to run the stateful service in kubernetes you will need to use the stateful set to ensure stable ports replica replication and data persistent so a stateful setup perform the same role for stateful ports at the infrastructure level kubernetes support various distributed storage backend like aws ebs azure disk google persistent disk nfs and many more adding a reliable available storage layer to kubernetes ensures high availability high availability of stateful workload also each of the master components can be configured for multiple nodes replication to ensure higher availability there is another point which is a very most important point that is security so kubernetes addresses security at multiple levels cluster application and network the api endpoints are secured through transport layer security tls transport layer security only authenticated user either service account or regular user can execute operations on the cluster via api request at the application level kubernetes secrets can store sensitive information such as password or token per cluster a virtual cluster if using namespace physical otherwise note that secret are accessible from any ports in the same cluster network policy for access to ports can be defined in a deployment a network policy specific specifies how ports are allowed to communicate with each other and with other network endpoints now portability kubernetes portability manifest in terms of operating system choices processes architecture cloud provider like aws azure or google cloud platform a new container runtime based besides docker can also be added through the concept of federation it can also support workload across the hybrid or multiple cloud environment this is also supports availability zone fault tolerance within a single cloud provider okay 
so this is all about the architecture of the kubernetes i hope this is very helpful for you if it is please like my video and share it with your friends if you don't subscribe here please subscribe my channel thank you in the next video i will discuss about the installation and setup of kubernetes thanks for watching if you like this video don't forget to click the subscribe button please